Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new episode of Darts Around the Globe where we meet a new darts player from a new country every episode. I'm your host Pim Huberts and today we are joined by someone who has been part of all the events of the PDC World Cup of Darts and is one of the best darts players from Gibraltar. It's Dyson Parody. Hi, my name is Dyson Parody from Gibraltar, known as Dynamite Dyson. And this is Darts Around the Globe. Today we are joined by one of the best darts players from Gibraltar, it's Dyson Parody. Dyson, uh, well, how are you doing? Uh, good, good. Uh, well, in Gibraltar, you know, it's, it's summer over here now, it's officially started. So yeah, uh, you know, this the COVID has made everyone stay home, so I've been playing online. But yeah, apart from that, everything's good, family's okay and everyone seems to be alright. Well, that uh, sounds awesome. Talking about that online darts or at least the uh, the situation uh, right now is it slowly um opening up over there in gibraltar or is yes it... yes uh, just today our chief minister has said that uh darts can be played on the rock so our our club which is at the uh the venue where the jdc uh was played uh it's been opened so as from today uh the committee i think will will get together and we can start playing no, the World Cup of Darts qualifiers and all the rest that we've, uh, everything has been postponed. Wow, so the, the local tournaments and uh, leagues can uh, be started uh, too then? Yes, yes, yes. So everything will start. Uh, as I say, I don't know because it's just been today. So mm-hmm. I think they're limiting the club to 12 players. So we have to rearrange the tournaments and how it's been done and start them earlier and stuff. So, so it's good news, really. Well, uh, interesting uh, developments uh, going on there. Um, the online darts, um, yeah, maybe it's a little bit on the uh, the ending already. But how if how is your um, experience in playing online? Well, I've 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 got my uh, uh, webcam darts. I've I registered in and I've played over 150 matches. I think uh, at first it was really, really, really difficult to get on. You know, people lagging, myself included, because the internet in Gibraltar has gone. So being everyone in staying in in the house, mm-hmm. uh, the internet has gone slower. So yeah, I've managed, but it's, it's really really difficult to play online darts. Really, um, is there was there any uh, Gibraltar national online league organized or something like that? No, we we were going to do it, but we people didn't have cameras ready. All the shops were closed, and everyone was waiting for cameras to be brought in. So what we are playing now. Is a, a World Cup of Darts uh, online amateur thing yeah. between eight players in Gibraltar. So we managed to beat Scotland, and then today we play Northern Ireland, I think, or Republic of Ireland. I don't know which of the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've seen that uh, tournament uh, too. That's a that's a great tournament, especially for you know the the global darts uh, uh, ID. Um, let, let's talk about your own career. Um, yeah, how did you get involved in playing darts? I, I got involved because <clears throat> my father and mother used to play down by the old matchbox club that used to be run uh, here in Gibraltar. So I started playing when I was nine. And they got me into it. I loved the game, you know, and I started playing and, and qualified for my first uh, European, uh, WDF European Youth Cup in Bulgaria, which I managed to win two bronze medals. So I've been in love with the game ever since, really. And at what age uh, did you qualify for that uh... WDF I was tournament. 12. I was actually twelve, and I was thirteen on the actual tournament. Wow! I, I was the best player of the tournament, just at the tender age of thirteen. I was the first time that you want to ever send the youth team over. That's uh, that. That's awesome. Really, um, playing darts all your life. Uh, then, um, let's talk about um, maybe the first bigger adult tournament you attended in two thousand and two. I'm talking about the World Masters. At what point? Or was this the point that um, you thought, hey, I'm going to take darts seriously and I can really make it? Hmm. I always had a, a little thing that I always could make it to play on stage and live on the cameras. And people would able to, some of the older players used to say, nah, you won't get in, you won't do this, you won't do that. And I sort of proved them wrong, you know, and I'm trying to pass on my legacy down to... Uh, you know, the likes of Craig, Sean, Justin, you know, all the, all the players that are coming up, you know, and just say that you can, you know, you can be and you can, if you have that little bit of ability and you train, you can get anywhere in life, you know. 
Yeah, well, well, Gibraltar definitely has a lot of talent uh, going on there. We're going to talk about that later on uh, in this uh, podcast. Um, 2009, maybe the first time you um, qualified for a PDC tournament, actually, the UK Open I'm uh, talking about. How -hmm. was it to be on uh, a tournament where you know that there are the best of the best uh, playing over there? Yeah, I can remember... Because, uh, yeah, I remember qualifying for it on my, on my first attempt, you know, and and it was it was really hard, you know, being in front of cameras, although I did not play live because I was in the other, you know, other, other boards. Mm-hmm. I did manage to win, I think it was three matches and then lost to, in the last round, to qualify for the last 64 to Yela Klassen and I missed a double. And it was it was really hard. That was my first uh, time playing the PDC, you know, and just watching in the venue. It was it was incredible. Yeah, I can uh, I can really imagine that. Um, in 2010, um, at that moment, uh, it became uh, really serious. Gibraltar um, was at the first edition of the PDC World Cup of Darts. Well, what do you think of this tournament? For for, no, for, for, for Gibraltar, you know, being such a small country mm-hmm. and giving this, this opportunity, you know, it's massive. You know, we're being live in front of thousands and billions on watching on TV. You know, for, for us, just being there, it's just a privilege, really. Yeah, you've been to every edition of uh, the the PDC World Cup of Darts in the in the team of uh, Gibraltar, with, which is uh, amazing to me. Um, can you maybe think back of that time in 2010 when uh, the PDC asked Gibraltar to participate uh, at that tournament? Do you know how that went? Well, it, it went like... Uh... For me, it's like when uh, our own Miss World won the uh, the Miss World competition pad. You know, it was incredible to be nominated or picked or whatever you want to call it out the top 32 countries in the world. You know, Gibraltar only having what 32,000 people for us was oh, the biggest thing ever to happen to dance in Gibraltar. Really, um, you had some uh, some great uh, results uh, to. Um... First, you you won from uh, Italy. At especially every country you played, you managed to at least um, get the same level, which is uh, well, what you're saying for the people you have in your country and uh, amazing uh, experience at least. Um, talking about this year's edition of the PDC World Cup of Darts, uh, you already said at the beginning that you're trying to get those qualifications uh, ready. So this means you're already 100% sure that. You will no, be at the tournament? No, no, not, not yet really, because there's there's uh, only been three played, and in, actually Craig Galliano is uh, ranked number one on this tournament, and I'm second. But as you know, uh, two players go already. But uh, the good thing is that we've the, the tournament has been cancelled to November in Austria, mm-hmm. so we can prolong or we can play our other matches, or the, the the qualifiers that are left. We can still we still have time, so there's about three. I think it's three tournaments left. Okay, so there is a chance we won't see Dyson Parody on this tournament. I know you're gonna do everything to be I'm at this tournament, of course. But... Say no, I'm going to. I'm, I'm, obviously, I want to qualify. You know what I mean? I'm going to say that I am going to qualify because I'm a very positive person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I will take that uh, question back and say yes, I will be there in the World Cup of Darts. Okay, well then I uh, totally yeah. agree with you. Then that's uh, yeah. Let's continue this uh, legacy of being at the PDC World Cup of Darts. Every edition, it will be uh, yeah, will be yeah. awesome. Um, just talking about that tournament, it, it is a, an amazing tournament for globalizing the dart sport. Um, with countries like Portugal and Latvia, we have seen more and more countries that, in my opinion, can uh, join the PDC World Cup, Cup of Darts. Um, do you think that? At some point, the World Cup of Darts needs to expand and add more countries to it. I think that the way they are running it now is perfectly. You know, there's more countries coming in. The only thing is that the PDC, in my opinion, have to redo or rethink which countries they invite or do it. In my opinion, the countries that are qualified for the PDC, for example, and if they're not, then the, the PDC is deciding what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But I think Gibraltar, I've, I've tweeted this on my Twitter many times, you know, that uh, I think Gibraltar has a great level of darts, and the moment that we start expanding and we start going and traveling more, our level will get better. 
because there's so many, the, the ability in Gibraltar is really, really high. I'm not saying it because I live here and it's like a bit biased, no, but the, the level in Gibraltar, it's for me, it's really high and it's we are a top 32 country in the world to be playing in the World Cup of Dots, in my opinion. Gibraltar doesn't have a tour card holder. Um, do you think Gibraltar deserves that place more than a country that as Latvia, which has Madras Rasma, maybe not as maybe not a second good player such yeah. as Gibraltar uh, has. But how do you think that discussion need, needs to end? I I think that uh, the moment you get players going to Q school, for example, Gibraltar, I didn't go personally didn't go to Q school this year because I had problems, not not problems, but um, family things and work and uh, outings and stuff, so I couldn't attend Q School last mm -hmm. year. But this year, obviously, we, we, we are planning on going, I think about 12 to 15 players are opting to go in, because I've already spoke to them and said, look, we need all of us to go, level has to has to pick up, World Cup of that places I, 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 I risk here, you know, so mm -hmm. if we go to the World Cup of Darts, and we, uh, to, sorry, to the um, Q School, and we do fairly good. Well, then, if, if you, there's players that don't have a Q School card or have one or whatever, just pick up the, the best players that do good in Q School, and those players will represent the country if there's any doubt on who should go and who shouldn't go. Do you think the, uh, the good level in Gibraltar of Darts is the reason that the PDC keeps choosing to let a team of Gibraltar represent and organizes a Euro Tour over there? Yes, I think so. You know, the Euro Tours here, um, spectator-wise, you know, it's going up. People are aware it's, it's a holiday destination and they can come and the tournament is getting stronger and stronger and stronger every year, as you can see. Mm -hmm. But I think, this, this, I think the PDC, as the same as me, see that there's loads of potential Gibraltar being it so small, you know. It's, we've, so we've got so many limited players, we've got 300 and something members, you know, and out of that, you know, I nearly beat Van Gogh in, in, in the 2016 edition of the European uh, Dutch Trophy, or Gibraltar Dutch Trophy. Mm -hmm. I beat La Classe and I beat Max Hopp, you know, the, the, the ability is there. So if I can show this ability to the players that are coming up, you know, Gibraltar can be, or whether it can be, and get to a certain level which they can, you know, say, look, whoa, Gibraltar is a really good nation. Yeah, I think uh, what you're saying is absolutely right. The ability is in Gibraltar. Um, before we're going to talk about that Euro Tour, I want to go back to 2011. That was um, after your first appearance at the PDC World Cup of Darts. Um, you got your tour card over there um, at Q School. Mm -hmm. And I saw you um, played or there were organized a couple of players championship in Spain, which is obviously uh, closer to Gibraltar. Do you think... In the future, um, those pro tour events, and when the PDC gets more and more international players, uh, international tour card holders, do we think the players championship tournaments needs to go outside the UK uh, again? I personally think yes, it should be. Although I know the PDC wants to get like a base sort of uh, and have like the UK being one of them, but I think it should be spread out throughout countries, and everyone should travel more or less the same. No, for me, I'm at the nearly end of Europe, so it happens for people from Norway as well. But if we have like a central thing, like having in Spain or having in France or something, or, or just shuffle it around a bit, you know, so everyone has to travel the same amount of time, you know, instead of just all of us being all the time on a plane and up and down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think for um, expanding the darts in other countries, it also raises the level in those uh, countries, such as. Gibraltar. When I got my tour card, sorry, when I got my tour card, it was really hard for me to travel because I didn't have those sponsors. I had to work. I remember I had to finish work at five o'clock and get from Malaga. I have to get the plane at seven. So from Gibraltar to Malaga is about an hour. So I had to rush up, get a plane. So I think I got my tour card on the wrong end of my life. You know, if I would have got it now, it would have been different. You know, but it's, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I hope you. Uh, I think you get certainly got a lot of experience from uh, getting that tour card but yes it is a little in unfair when uh, you know people from the uk can just maybe drive an hour to to the place they have to play and you have to prepare one or two days to even be at that place so uh, well respect for you um, let's talk about uh, maybe the tournament of your life um, the 
2016 edition of the Gibraltar Darts Trophy. It was also the first edition of that uh, Euro Tour event. You beat, uh, you've beat, you beaten uh, Dirk van Duivenbode, Jelle Klaassen, Max Hop, and uh, then the, the game um, that many people uh, maybe still uh, remember oh. against Michael van Gerwe. Um, yeah, how, how are you looking back at that tournament? But I, I look at it, uh, that double seven, which it didn't go in. No, I, I played I played good. I played, I know I've got so much in the tank. The only thing, I've, I, I still haven't performed my best, to be honest. You know, training-wise, uh, anyone can tell you who, who trains with me, you know, I can do 100 averages day in, day out. You know, it's just it's just a question of when. You know, if, you know, the, reflecting on that tournament, you know, I, I averaged almost 90 all the tournament. Even against Michael, I averaged, I think, 98, you know. So I, I do have the game in me, but it's just a question of <laughs> when does it come out. But, yeah, that, that, that tournament was a highlight of my career. You know, everything went, went great. And, you know, if, if I just would have beaten Michael, which is a big if, yeah. I would have been in the World Championship because the money that I got with a European would have qualified me straight away for the World. So that's how important that match was, really. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just uh, watched that uh, game back against Michael van Gerwen. Three um, missed uh, match darts. Um, do, do you still wake up sometimes in the night and think of those <laughs> three match darts? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I do. And every time I speak, especially from someone in Gibraltar, you know, it says, do you remember when you nearly beat Michael Wagner? I said, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, at least it's a, it's a great story and I hope you can play Michael van Gerwen again uh, another time. Um, in 2019, you also won a game against uh, uh, Cor Decker, the Norwegian uh, player, and uh, you played against uh, Peter Wright. Um, do you think that Gibraltar Darts Trophy, um, especially with those national uh, host qualifiers, is maybe the important, the most important tournament in Gibraltar? Yes, by far, yes, it is. Apart from the World Cup of Darts, which is not played in the water, but yeah, it's, it's by far the... the it's like uh, young Yasin here, you know, he went up and performed, you know, so you see that everyone is aspiring to get there, to see how they play on stage. So it's a really important thing for us to have because people or players, especially young players that are coming up now, aspire to play there. They've seen me and they've seen the other players and to get there and to play a professional that player, just you can measure yourself how you can play up on that stage. Mm-hmm. Um, well, one talent that already got on that stage, uh, I think it was last year, was Justin Hewitt. Um, he also did very well in the G- JDC World Championship. Um, yeah, how is the youth game in Gibraltar? The youth game is going strong, although Justin has broken three ribs. He's uh, recovering now. He fell on his motorbike, but youth starts is coming stronger and stronger. You know, they. I left my legacy. Now these kids, which have done better than me at the youth, they have left another legacy for the, the, the boys that are coming up, boys and girls, really. And we have a good base of, of youth players coming up. So if they can do better or do the same as what the Justin and Craig and Sean have left, you know, Gibraltar, I, in that I think Gibraltar has a really, really bright future. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, that's great to hear. Um, How do um, local, you know, legends like you or former world championship participant uh, Dylan Duo um, help those uh, talents in Gibraltar? Yes, we do. We do. Well, Dylan does a bit more than me because he has his son and he, he goes up to the kids. But I want to start making a bit more for the youth as well. You know, start giving back a bit and start training them and, and, and questioning them and, and, and asking them stuff and telling them stuff and do this and not do that. You know, sometimes when we go up to our club, which finally we have a club to play, Mm-hmm. Thanks to the government, yeah. Um, they are there because we uh, play later than them, so they are there, you know. And we can give them tips there. Look, do this, do that. Don't don't throw too quick, you know. Take your time, and you know all the stuff that you learn. You just, you teach the kids. Do, do you think that club having a club um, helps professional professionalizing the darts yes. in Gibraltar? Yes, definitely, definitely, because it's. Uh, a uh, beer-free, alcohol-free uh, club. You know, there's no beer being involved as you know, in other clubs and other bars, and you know, cause that really come from a, from a pub ambience. You know, and um, it, that's taken 
taken its toll. You know, we, we always used to play in different clubs. We used to have tenders for the for the for the association to play with, and now we have our own base, which is open every day. Well, now, fortunately, it's, it's open now because all this COVID that seems to die down a bit. So yeah, they can go up, they can train, they can interact, they have proper setup. You know, it's 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 where the JDC was played, so it's all everything's professionally made. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, talking about that. Um, well, cooperation with the J uh, the JDC JDC. Um, well, Gibraltar and the JDC they work together more and more. Also with the um, JDC virtual. Uh, qualification and the tournament that is going to be played in Gibraltar again. Um, yeah, what do you think of the uh, cooperation between yeah, Gibraltar actually, and JDC? They've actually signed for a couple of years. That's what I've been, I've seen, and it's it's tremendous. You know, it's really good for for that in Gibraltar. It's the best thing that's ever happened again. You know, at this time for the youth. So that's that proves what I what I've been saying that. Having the kids and now having the JDC, which is the Junior Dutch Corporation, it's following the footsteps of the PDC, doing it more professional. So that goes to show that the, the the level, you know, we've got Spain just here over the border. We've got players coming over, training with our kids over here because there's nothing over there. You know, so that means that the Volta will, in the next, it has to happen because in the next five, ten years, you know, players are going to come, and players are going to be able to play, and they're playing at that level. With different players around the world, so the level of Gibraltar will certainly go up, higher mm-hmm. than it is now. Mm-hmm. We have seen multiple uh, talented darts players from Gibraltar. I'm sorry, yeah. uh, going to the development tour. Um, yeah, how do you think um, you get more talented Gibraltar players to the development tour? As I said, you know, having the club and and. and if I can get involved with them and helping them to get their mindset and actually play the way it should be played, I think more players are going to go to the development tour as it is now. Because I got I got Sean Craig and Justin and, and Jerome, all the four players that played in the ADC, I got them three months prior to the tournament. And look how they did. You know, Justin got to the final and uh, our team uh, beat Wales, you know, which is a, a power, power nation in darts. Mm-hmm. If I can get them now and develop them and do the development which I want to give them in the next three or four years, I think they should they will do really good in development tour and even who knows they can even get a tour card and, and a tour card for myself as well <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, a bright uh, a bright future for the yeah. youth uh, in Gibraltar. Um, yeah, talking about your future, I assume you're gonna do all your best to be at the Gibraltar Darts Trophy in 2020 uh, again. Yeah, apparently it's it's going on. Uh, the government has said that in September, and the PDC has said that the uh, the European tour from Gibraltar is going on. So I will try all my best to be there. Yeah, and I'll try my best to be in Q School next year. I've got my sponsors ready, and you know, I'm uh, this pandemic that's happened has helped me realize and train more. You know, and and I realize what I want mm-hmm. in my life, which is I want my tour card and I want to be. Well, I know I could be. Yeah, I, I hope you're doing well on the Q School uh, next year. Um, you also, you've also won um, a couple of WDF tournaments. Um, is this something that, if the tournaments are going to be played this year, is this something you're also um, planning to go to? Yes, yes. I, I was actually this year planning, since I didn't go to Q School, I was planning to go to a couple of uh, WDF tournaments. I had planned to go to the Dutch Open, which I was... I registered to go, but I couldn't go due to work commitments. That's another thing. I've got a family of three. I am self-employed. I work for myself, and it's quite difficult to travel around, you know. But um, speaking to my wife and speaking to my partner in my company as well, you know, I I should make arrangements to try and fulfill my dating career. Mm-hmm. Well, it, uh, it sounds like a good uh, future to me. Um, Tyson Perry, thank you uh, for being uh, in this podcast and uh, I wish you all the best in your uh, future career. Thank you for having me, Pim. Thank you.